Okay, welcome back to another video on the inter Entity Framework. Uh, we're going to talk today about concurrency, the dreaded, dreaded subject of concurrency. Uh, people that have been in this business a while, we've all dealt with it. Uh, what do we do when you have a multi-user environment and multiple people trying to update the same record? How do you handle that? Well, there's a few ways to handle it. You can say, if user A and B check out the same record, user A saves an update, and then user B saves an update, then user B's changes overwrite user A's. Or you can say we're going to throw an error and user B has to reload the record, see what user A put in, then decide if user B wants to save their updates. Uh, there's just a thousand different ways you could do it. And none of them are very fun. Now, thankfully, Entity Framework, we're going to cover the one built in the entity framework, the one that comes to mind as being probably the most useful, is it will actually handle the sections for us in the model that we want to be sensitive to concurrency, um, field specific concurrency as they call it. So let's talk a little bit about how do you set it up. Well, in order to get your model concurrency aware I hate that but in order to, to get it that way you just go click on your model you'll bring up your objects now you we're not gonna mess with our view because we're not updating the view now if we were updating the view we'd probably want to do it there too but like let's click on a property customer name if we come over here to its properties we can see concurrency mode on yours it's gonna say none change it to fixed also do that for purchase date and amount and what that's going to do is when you save it or any user saves it it's going to check those fields to see if what's in the database matches the original amount that you had fetched before you updated it's going to make them aware of their uh, quote unquote original value it's going to make them concurrency aware and I guess I could say value sensitive but anyway we're focusing on the one built in so that's the one we're gonna we're gonna use here now I've modified our form I've added a uh, group box here with two buttons in it and in the code behind I have added a section to deal with in a region it's called concurrency you can just open or close this region and all they do is when you click the buttons they open a new form and all this form is is it that's really interesting <laughs> moved it down I don't even know if I can move it up uh, it moved this form where you've got three text boxes for the customers name the date of a purchase and the amount and then a save and a cancel so when we simulate it, we're going to grab the first record out of the database, user 1 and user 2, and in one window, we'll update one of the three values, save it, and in the second window, as you might imagine, the value now showing in that window is no longer the value that's in the database, so we have a concurrency issue. So when we go to save, we're going to have a concurrency exception. Uh, so how we deal with that is going to be important. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. How do we deal with it? And if we hit cancel, we just close the uh, window. So let's look at the code behind a little bit and let's see what we do. Well, here you'll notice right out of the box, I've done a couple of things different. I've declared my context at the class level and I've declared my object that I'm fetching from the context at my class level. And you say, well, Dean, you didn't put this in the using, you didn't do this, this, this. My goal here was to create a situation most likely to have a concurrency issue okay now in the real world I'd probably go out when I saved it and then get the object and do all kinds of things but here I want a concurrency issue so when the form loads let's go find the form load right here when this form is shown it goes out to the context and it gets the first record from that context and what that's going to do is that's going to go out here. And if I go to tables, 
I go to customers, I go to purchases, and I look in the purchases table. It's going to pull, pull the first purchase record, whose cu and this customer ID is 4, it's $19. That customer ID 4, if I show the table data, is Tom Thumb. Update. So it should show us Tom Thumb update and that he has a $19 purchase on both forms because when they load, they both load the first or default record and they're both hitting in this bin directory, remember, the same database. Now remember our model and all the changes we make to our model we're making at the project level up here on this customer's database. And when you make a change to not your model but your database, it will propagate down. So you would lose some data in your bin copy if you change the structure uh, or store procedure or something up here and it recopies. You can confirm that by looking at the customers, highlighting it, going to its copied output directory and seeing that it's currently set to output if newer. We didn't change anything. We updated our model. didn't affect the database so it won't copy it. Okay. And then we just put the values of what we fetch in our text box. It's pretty easy. We have a pointer to it up here, so we're storing it at the uh, class level. And then when we hit save, we come down here to the save. We populate that customer object. I shouldn't even call it that customer. That purchase data object with the value from the text boxes. And then we try to save the changes. Well, on the first time we save them, it should go without incident. And it should go directly to this function called display data to users. You'll notice it's Visual Studio 2013. I can see I've got a reference. I can see where it's from. That's really cool. Uh, display data to users. And all we're going to do is we are going to pull that first one from the database and using string.format show its values to the user. And you say, well, Dean, why didn't you just use the purchase data object you have locally and show that value to the user? I'm just making doubly sure that it's saved. That's all I'm doing. There's a slight performance hit, but it's worth it to make sure that your data was, in fact, persisted to the database. Now let's think about user 2. They've opened it up. They're looking at the same record. User 1 is now saved, so this purchase data that's stored for user 2 no longer holds the same record. I mean, let's say we change the purchase amount to $21. Well, this one thinks it's 19 in window 2, so it's out of date. So when they go to hit save, or we go to hit save, this is going to throw a DB update concurrency exception. And we're going to catch it. And we're going to show them that, hey, we tried to save it and it failed. But we are going to go in and get from the context the object context which failed. We're going to get the entries that failed. And then we're going to refresh it. Here, the refresh mode, if I hit the dot, there's two. I think there's only two. Yeah, client wins and store wins. In this case, we could say, well, the database wins. And if they're trying to overwrite something in the database that doesn't match, keep the database values. Or client wins, where we say, OK, well, if the client value is different than what's in the database, darn the database and write what's on the client. In this case, we, we're going with client wins. And then we grab this failed entity, which we grabbed up here, and its entity. And then we're going to use that failed context and try to save the changes again. And it should save just fine. And we're going to display the data to the user. So this is a neat little way to demonstrate a failed uh, context update. So let's watch it work. Debug. Start without debugging. Drag my form in here on the view. We're going to launch user 1. And we're going to launch user 2. And we'll see that we're simulating user 1 and user 2. Same record. We're going to change this amount to $21. And we're going to save it. And it should save and show us that it's safe successful. 
with no concurrency problems. And we see that it did. It saved everything fine, $21. Now, here's the problem. This user 2, at the class level, you remember, it has the context and the pointer to the entity. It thinks that the amount's $21. Or, I'm sorry, it thinks that it's 19 It doesn't know that user 1 has changed it to 21 Okay, now here, user 2, we've removed Tom Thumb's name. We've changed it from Tom Thumb to Tom Thumb, uh, from updates to Tom Thumb. And now we're going to change the amount. Remember, in the back database right now, it's $21. Here, it's 19 we're going to change it to, let's say, $25. We're going to save. And there is our exception. First attempt at an update save failed. Refreshing and trying again. It looked and it saw that the date that it had, in it, or the date, the data that it had was not the most current. So it threw that exception. We see it here. It's going to refresh grab the entity and try to save it again and I'm gonna say okay and then we see that it did successfully save the name has been updated because we went to the database to fetch it and the amount's been updated I say okay so we should see in our database Tom Thumb and $25 if I close this go to my database which is the remember we gotta go to the one in our bin directory because that's the one where these of are, so that's this connection actually. Right here, that's the local DB. It's in my bin, you'll see. Let's show the, uh, remember it was number four, Tom Thumb. So update is gone, so he's been updated. And we should be able to go to the purchases, and remember we grab the first or default, and we should see that it's 25 bucks. So there we go. So, so there is the example on how to handle concurrency. So hopefully this video taught you a thing or two and I was able to help uh, those of you who've been sending me some questions about concurrency. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to, to put them in the comments or send me an email directly. And maybe as always, we ask you, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Thanks for stopping by.